A few days ago, I was in the cinema watching the trailer for Disney's new Alice Through the Looking Glass, and I realised. Each and every one of us has already fallen through the looking glass, and nothing is as it seems. I was born free, but I'm a slave. I was told that my life is full of choices, but actually, there's only one course. I was raised to be true to myself, but actually, I'm expected to conform, or else. Because each and every one of us is a firmly indentured serf, enthralled to the $350 billion global beauty business, an industry that behaves like it's a religious cult. Of course, the myth of beauty is a belief as old as humanity, but by now it's an industry bigger than Google or Microsoft, as powerful as the global television business, and about one quarter the size of the OPEC oil consortium. And it's killing us. Not just with petroleum and face creams, antifreeze and shampoo, cow's toxins in frown lines, and neurotoxins in our perfumes. But by stripping us of the natural order of things. To change, to get older, to age, gradually. You see, when Lewis Carroll's Alice went through the looking glass, she found that everything was turned on its head. And the beauty industry is one that depends on the looking glass and relies on turning everything upside down. If skin is white, it should be bronzed. If brown, it should be white. If hair is curly, it should be straight. If a face is old, it must seem young. In the story for Alice, time moves backwards, and that's exactly one of this industry's biggest sellers. Time travel to your youth, whatever your age. You see, it sells eye cream to teenagers to prevent the signs of aging. The same cream to 30-somethings to stop signs of aging. And the same cream again to older women to reverse the signs of aging. Getting older is no longer a privilege, it's an avoidable disgrace. The beauty business is a perfect postmodern creation, an industry that masquerades as a religion. Its role, like many cults before it, is to teach us that we are flawed, imperfect. It tempts us with the promise of perfection as long as we comply. But like the Queen in Alice's story explains, you can have jam yesterday or jam tomorrow but you can't have jam today. In other words, for this modern belief system, tomorrow never comes. In this looking glass world, women are persuaded to shave their faces daily, men to remove all hair from every orifice, and children to have rhinoplasty. It's one of the world's fastest growing industries, and its complete encroachment into every aspect of our lives is spectacular to witness but terrifying to experience. You see, while the beauty industry has existed for decades, young people today, born since 2000, are the first generation to have been subjected to this brainwashing since birth. Born and raised in the internet age, we are the first generation that has had nowhere to run from the incessant propaganda of beauty myths. Our TV screens have been filled with Botox presenters. Every magazine, website, and movie has airbrushed away any hint of a flaw. The beauty industry has imposed a one-size-fits-all dictate. Flawlessness is a must. To be different is heresy. Even the most striking beauty is not good enough anymore. Now we have whole families selling their souls to this cult in return for fame with no function, vanity with no vision, and every part of them exploited for this cult of beauty. And as the formidable comedian Bette Midler said when Kim Kardashian posted another nude selfie, if Kim wants us to see a part of her we've never seen, she's going to have to swallow the camera. Now, I know that the pursuit of beauty for men and women is nothing new. 
Ancient Egyptians would burn their eyes with coal pencil. Since antiquity, women have risked poor health and premature death by whitening their skin with lead and mercury. Victorian women had ribs deliberately broken or even removed to achieve the smallest waist possible. Women and men across the ages have lived with permanent head lice and vermin, living under elaborate wigs secured into place with pungent animal fat. But ladies and gentlemen, the difference now is that there is no escape. Turn on the TV, the computer, and you're bombarded by, by this, this perfection, what it looks like, how to attain it, and why we must all pursue it. Across Asia, the biggest grossing product range is skin whitening cream. But in Australia, bronzers, tanning lotions, and sun blush finish are the most popular types of beauty counter products. So why aren't Caucasian women with naturally pale skin sold products to maintain whiteness? Because most of us would realize that we didn't need it. In this grass is always greener industry, its sole purpose is to create demand and stimulate need. In other words, force feed us impossible dreams. School discos and dances have become red carpet moments for everyone. Woe betide you if you're not spray tanned and professionally made up in true Hollywood style. And that's just the boys. And make no mistake, we, the newest, freshest generation, are the target. Brand loyalty in this industry is a powerful force. One of the most successful brands is Olay, one that is, has existed for over 80 years. And over half of this industry's most successful brands have existed for more than 40 years. They are targeting us young, and I mean really young. Remember, boys and girls, you're never too young to start looking after your skin. An illusion of need is maintained through the ever-present media that fills our daily world. Imagine if we saw the real Jennifer Lawrence in magazines before the Barbie-like makeover. Imagine if we could see Cameron Diaz's acne-scarred face or Liam Hemsworth's eight-pack free torso. Would we still be drawn to the products that they promote? Unilever is part of the global triumvirate that includes L'Oreal and Procter & Gamble, some of the most powerful pushes of the beauty myth. Collectively, their global profits amounted to more than the GDP of over 40 African countries. And to quote some more figures, Australians spend $18.5 billion a year on beauty and personal care. That's more than we spend on food. But the worst part has to be that we, the young, have been born into a world driven by the nonsense of a beauty that is actually unattainable. Now, our parents' generation are pretty much beyond hope. By the time they're retired, over half of them will have used some kind of bovine toxin to numb their facial muscles and plastic filler to pump, plump their lips, and they will have spent tens of billions of dollars on the elixir of youth. Yet they will still grow old. After the corsets and the crinolines of the Victorians and the Edwardians, the 1920s saw women breaking free. Their hair and their skirts got very short, their constricting clothing was tossed aside, and social norms went out of the window. There was excess and frivolity and laughter and levity. After the Puritans of Cromwell's England banned dancing and music and Christmas, King Charles II restored fun and festivals. So let this be our time. Let's start our own restoration, have our own roaring 20s. But this time, we will roar against the powerful beauty industry, restore our, freedom from age restore our freedom from slavish devotion to invented notions of beauty, refuse age-defying snake oil, keep our bodies free from cow poisons and collagen. We can choose to indulge, but we should not feel that we have to. We can allow ourselves to be driven by personal choice, but not by false need or social standards. Instead, we can get our nutrients from real food, energy from exercise and serotonin from enjoying the outdoors. And let's look forward to growing old disgracefully. 
Humans are born to die. It's one of the ironies of the human condition that youth is wasted on the young. So let's start a movement. Rather than chasing our youth once it's gone, a movement to appreciate it while we have it and cherish it rather than covet it once it is gone. Back in Wonderland, when Alice meets the unicorn through the looking glass, it offers her a deal. Now that we have seen each other, if you'll believe in me, I'll believe in you. This is the deal we are being offered daily by the beauty industry. Believe in what we are selling and you will be saved. But the mythical creature that is the beauty industry cannot be allowed to recruit any more people into its cult, cult of mutual belief. And only those who still have their youth are in a position to see this industry for what it is and to reject it. The rule is, says the Queen to Alice, you can have jam tomorrow and jam yesterday, but you can never have jam today. So please join me. Say no to the beauty industry. Say yes and enjoy some jam today. Say no to perfection. Say yes to the beauty of asymmetry, novelty, and uniqueness. As humans, we must learn to love the sorrows of our changing faces. And we must start today. Thank you.